Hello there everyone and welcome back to episode 5 of us playing as a bone cohort. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. And we're still recovering from basically what we had to do to make sure that we are at least somewhat balanced with the NCR, but... Our allies in the Legion are they're dead. They're long dead. They cannot between the Republic of the Rio Grande, Hangdogs, NCR, except for Aurelius. He's just kind of hanging out. But we gotta talk about a life well spent. The twins rushed through the Medicus of Nova Boria, all the highest technology. And the best doctors they could find were already there, but when they entered and everyone bowed to the bone centurion, the head medicus told Borealis the bad news. He fell. Some of his broken ribs have penetrated his lungs and they're completely collapsed. We could do a transplant or even surgery, but the chances of him surviving are slim. It will never be the same, and he would need permanent care for us now. He is awake but connected to a breather. And they were talking about Eridanus, their old man. Eridanus was never their father. He never tried to be it, but he was a paternal figure the twins followed through their life. Ever since he crucified the real father by the Colorado, they had been on his tail. Following his footsteps, when they came to Oregon, the old man had the will and honor to have him with them. Even if he was the oldest legionary, they all knew. And finally, not in battle, but not in glory, not even honorably, he was laying in a bed with machines keeping him alive. A mockery to the teachings of Kaisar. Australis and Borealis went to the around the bed, each one kneeling and grabbing one of the weak hands of the Aerodonis. From their different sides, looking at the man with his open brown eyes as he breathed deeply into the mask, Borealis, Australis, I gave you those names, look at you. You have gone beyond the expectations. I deserve to die. I'm old, frail, useless. Please, I beg the two of you, reach my edge. Go and die with your loved ones like I am now doing. Boreas opened his mouth, but Aerodonis squeezed his hand as hard as he could, making the bone centurion close it. I will tell Mars of your feats, of your, your Aerodonis let out a gasp because Australis had turned off the breather machine a long time ago and went into the room. The twins just held and squeezed his hands even harder. Let it go. And let Aerodonis go. Retire centurion Aerodonis from the bone core, which sucks. But as you can see, uh, we're getting attacked quite crazily, but we are making quite a bit of money in this position. Um, we have to choose one. The people of our royal worship the chosen one almost like a god, but they're not a god. <coughs> we have a self a found them. But we got a clue of driving them around the highway and killing our patrols. Uh, maybe the time is to make, it's time to make a bait. The disciples of the South follow a strange kind of Christianity, while the North is filled with the crab cultists. They get industry out of crab meat is an a, a bad idea, and we found their uh, first side of the Pacific, so. As long as we can hold out. I mean, they're, they're really trying hard to push us out, but we're doing okay. We're not doing Magnificent, but we're, we're doing what we can here. Reliability. Oh, I'll get some more recon. Why not? That'd be nice. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's okay. It's not great right now. We're running out of slaves and whatnot. But, you know, we are buying quite a bit. The Jewel of Oregon. I read this one, I think, last time. So I didn't do all the focuses that we did in a row like I did last time. So if you want to do this one again, please go ahead. As we get a core on Arroy, which is pretty nice. Get 2,000 more slaves, which is pretty good too. So, as you can see, we are trying to make more divisions. We don't have that much manpower, but we have enough for now because we have been coring more stuff. Now, we're not increasing compliance anywhere here because it costs way too much. So, instead, we're eradicating resistance, which is also very nice as well. So, resistance is pretty small, as everything else is doing okay. 114 uh, political power. <laughs> Excuse me. Political power. Uh, that would be bad core. We start, gotta start coring more stuff, so. Uh, that's pretty good. The Crowlands are pretty good. We are going to need 161 political power to core all this stuff. So, it is what it is. Uh, but we're also going to come down here. Vehicles. Yeah, we're going to get vehicle stuff next. I was on 25. That's pretty nice and cheap. like it a lot. We have no planes, unfortunately. But we're pretty much just kind of sitting here, waiting for things to happen. A port to the west, Port Mall. We got to take a Port Mall, too, unfortunately. Idahoan designs for the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but a divine power to destroy strong, strong destroy strongholds. Two Corinthians ten fourteen or ten four. The weapon designs brought by the Christians have been quite the improvement of our past ones, and help us develop new kinds of firearms and even melee weapons. The jewel of the Northwest. Kaiser might have said I said in Vegas, in the city of the old world, a city of sin and decadence, but Nova Bora is a shining beacon, a jewel in the rough, forget Port Mall. And the haunted city that was once called Portland. Our jewel will be built by the hard working hands and by the blood of our slaves. Should be nice. It's ahead of time, but I don't care. We kind of need it. Crowlands. Um, uh, I believe I read this one before, too, so the smell of the sea makes me sick. So that'll be good it as well. Oh, we want to wait for that one. That one next. I oh, would go over here. Nova Boria. Increase size again? Yes. Level 8, which is good. We're not trading two, two, two places. Oh, I guess I never created that as a route. 
It's weird. Okay, whatever. Uh, so after that, after, I give women some rights. Slavery is a central idea to the cohort. But seeing as we are lacking manpower, we should give the strongest women of each tribe a chance of joining our legionaries as followers or squires of old. Clearly in a support role, these women who are not doing menial tasks and brooding shall be a lot of slight amount of responsibility. Women auxiliaries. A slave is a slave, whatever gender it may be. A legionary is a slave with more rights and duties. An auxiliary is a middle ground between those such things. Women are able to become auxiliaries if they are barren or old enough. It does not matter as long as the reproductive means are impaired. Auxiliaries must assist their legions in battle. Our legionaries in battle. Most of these medics are even as crews and weapon teams. Oh, we actually made more, more divisions. Look at that. Four divisions are not enough to hold the line here, so... Select for now. Get over here. Help hold the line on this side. What we got. Uh, I guess we have exiled leaders too. Dojin. I kind of got rid of these guys because these. This is from the other group. Doris. Another field commander. Or Astralis. Yes. Levis Unis. Sure. Why not? Get down there first before we do anything else. Let's go and go and do that. Are we missing anything here? A lot of infantry equipment, actually. Interesting. How much money do we have? 196. That's fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and buy advanced missileistic weaponry. Sure. Brings down the prices just a little bit. Nice. Let them continue to attack us like absolutely crazy. Because here are the casualties and here are the divisions. I mean, I, I, I had to get rid of some of the NCR divisions, just to be honest with you. But at this point, well, we lost 4,000, lost 27,000, covered volley of fires. Nice, even though we're using fists. Don't ask questions, please. There you go. Idaho and Designs. Women and some rights, maybe. Uh, women's Scouts, maybe, next. Because we've done a lot of focuses so far. Women are nimble things. Easily being able to slip out of good trouble when needed. Making them our scouts and spies would make our secretive exploits. Oh, hello. Uh, um, would make our secretive exploits even stronger. They would raise less suspicion due to them being women. People never suspect Legion spies and scouts to be women. What the heck is this? Lose all my stability. Lose, get more, st more support. Arizona and Flames. Legion had controlled Arizona for decades. The Bone Corridor was a different kind of legion. It was not the same, even if it was the same foundations were there. It was going to take a while for all the administrative and bureaucratic matters to finish changing. Nevertheless, most of the legionaries, those who did not kill themselves and chose to at least continue their resistance against the Hesperian state, were going to be put down sooner or later. But meanwhile, Arizona would not be the best place to stay at. Uh... A Bone Navy? <laughs> oh god. We'll never match the other nations in shipbuilding abilities, after all. Legion always had a land force. We could always prepare docks and build enough ships to be a deterrence and maybe send some naval invasions if needed. I don't want to do that one yet. Oh, Conquest of the North. This focus for reward will change if we complete the Send Supplies of Camelot focus and if the Camelot survival still exists. What is it in the North but snow and dispersed peoples? Nothing. At the, and that's why the Bone Corps claimed it. The Alaskan pipeline resources in ancient ruins of the old world free to scavenge and restore as the so called inhabitants of Cascadia are dealt with. Our friends in the Two Sun. The Cult of Nas was a strange set for Boreas and Australis. The Doom of Viri had never gone south, so soon the Grand Roads of Two Sun were a welcoming sight. They had a meeting with the old leader of them, well faster. Grab the bull by the horns. Austro Aurelius, Lucius, Alanius, Amalpius, and Vulpus, those were the leaders, the ones who had replaced Kaiser, but not anymore. They remains of the old order. Let's bring them to the first Arizonian Hesperian court, where Boreas will be its judge and executioner. Navajo integration. Ah. Huh. Fortress of Orgium. Or someone does not know how to manage his own household, how does he care for God's church? 1 Timothy 3.5 The missionaries told the Bone Dancers, and they were right. We will build fortresses out of Nova Boria and Cardinalis, so no one no one will ever doubt or control over our people. Uh, women leaders? Uh, a mechanic, a doctor, an architect, or even a general do not need marital prowess, so why would, it not, why would a woman not be chosen to lead such groups or teams if, of people of ability and skills are even better than some men? Women legionaries. 
A legionary is a soldier, or trained and disciplined, a warrior without fear or care with, about oneself. The only thing that matters in a legionary's mind is the glory of the cohort. Be a man or woman, they both can hold a machete in their hands. They can both shoot as good as any. But why stop women from joining the ranks of the cohort if that, what the cohort needs is more hands to hold weapons? Women equality. Man or woman doesn't even matter as long as they serve the cohort and the bone centurion. Their lives are fulfilled and their duties complete. There's a lot of monthly population stability or resistance target, but you get a lot more population, which is not bad. Other than that, those are the focuses we can take right now. And I don't want to open up the eastern front, but the bear is well entrenched, but the Nevada's weak. Well, we should destroy the bear's backyard and surprise them. We will be victorious. I don't want to wait for that one. Um, conquest of the north. So we can't really quite go there and improve our blimps. Well, we should probably research blimps. But that's it for now, and then we're going to continue on and see what else we can do as we, uh, well, we'll attempt to defend against the, uh, NCR. All right, everyone, so basically soon after we faded out, this popped up. Dark skies ahead. Basically, we're going to have a civil war. Um, so, uh, once again, I had to use Khan's commands to see if, because, like, we can't fight the NCR and its Baja state and two sons and, and a civil war. Like, it's just impossible. But... Borealis was invited by the Centurions for a meeting in the Castrum Orientalis, and the newly built Castrum in Pharmacy Hill. It was a beautiful Castrum, square, solid, and defensible, even if it was not from there. It fell close to the camp in which they had finally made the first move. The Castrum was filled with its most loyal legionaries, but Astralis had taken the long way from Nova Borea as he needed to deal with once some travels. None of those had sat on this throne, and the main tent of the fortress. That's when a slave girl came towards him, a new slave girl, one with blue eyes and red hair. She was quite unique in her looks, which raised the bone of Centurions' attention. Seeing as she brought forth a huge vase filled with wine. Simply following the girl with his eyes, he expected the Centurions to come here in the following hour to discuss more plans and strategies, but as a new slave stood next to him, he had a sudden need of sudden feeling. What is your name? he asked softly towards the slave, which was wearing a tunic with a huge red X on it. Aurora. She spoke in a gentle tone before she threw the jar at him, covering him in something that was not blind. He only managed to stand up, surprised and confused, before he could react, before he could say anything. He saw fire. It did not matter anymore. Uh, oh my god. Well, the Civil War bones, as soon as the legionaries found the charred body of the bone satyrium, it became a chaos. Ostras was the first one to find the charred remains of his brother, doing nothing but screaming and yelling in response. It was dragged back to Nova Borea by loyal legionaries as the whole cohort started to fracture. Communications and hierarchies breaking up across Oregon. Several cliques and war bands forming immediately all around the glands that used to be unified by the share of personality Borealis. The Satyrian Council, instead of being the new force of control and dominance in Oregon, broke in pieces with several factions fighting for power to claim the mantle left by the bone satyrium. Dark Town's head and Oregon was never going to recover. Hey, what's up, Australis? He's a well liked leader. Uh. Well, I mean, who, are they really all different or. Saltus? Civil War Bones? Defectum? Isn't Defectum dead? Is this bugged? Isaiah? And then there's us, which we took everything else. Oh, and then there's better. Why is he? Well, we're gonna go with the Astralis, probably. Um, Artisans of War. Last push. Uh, the Oregon Battle Royale. Southern Snake. A single guy. Guns, we need guns. Um, yeah, okay. Well, that's ain't good. Um, who are we fighting? Isaiah's Defectum and Saltus. What to say? I, mean, I guess we're gonna try to like go for all the VPs, maybe. I doubt we'll make it work, but like 
bro. Seriously? Um, a barrel of laughs. As one of the several slave links were marching north towards Nova Borea, Boreas sat on top of his truck. Observing the thousands of people in chains and collars tied together like an infinite line as far as eyes could see, legionaries with automatic weapons at the sides forcing them to keep walking as recruits with clubs dealt with the ones that couldn't walk anymore, cutting their chains and letting them die at the side of the road. In a way, it was an amazing sight. Not a beautiful one, as Boreas always knew that this was part of their life, suffering, but also a way for them to be reborn once again. Ah, they great Dominus. This slave was one of their generals. What should I do with him? A de Decanus. Carrying the chain of a slave came closer to his truck. Australis, which was on the inside of the truck, also got out to look at what was going on. It was amusing, extremely amusing, as Australis would get him to giggle and laugh like a complete and utter moron as he realized who it was. Boreas, of course, knew her. It was the so-called General Moore, which had fought against the Brotherhood so many years ago. He was completely beaten up, dressed in rags, and she didn't even look, dare look up at them. Yet Boreas got off the roof of the truck, looking directly at the eyes of the woman, grinning slightly as he opened his mouth to speak. General Cassandra Moore, am I right? Do you even know who I am? Does it even matter? The dead Boreas spoke, not shutting his laughing brother. Uh, as he did so, the woman glanced at him before spitting right in his face, making the decanus hit her in the face with a hard punch, leaving her eyes stinging. You'll be taken north to my lovely home in Obaboria. Maybe you'll survive, maybe you won't. But if you do, I'm in serious need of new house staff. More than I speak back to him. So... Oh god. Well... Huh. No, I guess we have this person. Cause we're still uh we're not rulers anymore. Oh. Well, let's make sure you're not choosing that person. Well, I guess just like the rest of this campaign, if it doesn't go well, we're gonna use consequence again. Go flip and figure. I mean, as you can see, we've, we've researched a lot. I don't understand why this has, just has to fire now. Let's go and put them out. There you go. Did you, like, go right here or something? This is so stupid. Uh, I'm gonna use cons commands at this point because this is kind of ridiculous. There's better turbine. I'll see you when the war is almost over. Um, let's read a few more. Recruit slaves. Bodies, we need bodies. Using bones as weapons. Women workers. Cohorts experience. Uh, recruit everybody. There are the walls. Legionary fighting experience. We are doomed. Every piece of bone club. I'm out of here. The last push. And Civil War victory, or victor, hopefully. The Australis cohort is victorious. Australis sat on the seat of Nova Bora, the true capital of the Bone cohort. Now that all the other centurions were dead or led left in the northwest, peace was finally, finally upon the expedition. Australis was now able to finalize the objective of the mission that they were. An alarm blast crossed cast from those men yelled, another attack, a centurion coming back, another enemy. Australis could only stand up seeing the fires on the horizon. Slaves, settlers, raiders, even legionaries were rising up, burning and blaming the legion for all the suffering they had gone through. Brother against brother, family against family for not a real reason, just meaningless politics. Australis looked back at the crowd, but his eyes focused on a man. A man which had a rocket launcher on his shoulder, not a normal rocket launcher, as he saw the mini nuke on it. What was the last thing Australis saw? Become the Northwest Anarchy. Oh, tribal slaves become the ruling party. Oh. Well. Well then, we're dead. 
Look at that. Well, I guess that's one way to end the campaign. Um, I really hate that we didn't get what we really wanted here. Like, we got bogged down because of New Reno, and that stopped everything in our tracks, even though, like I said, we were on historical. Like, this really sucked. Like, it was going so well, and then it just stopped stopped going so well, and then we had to fight the NCR immediately, and we couldn't take up Port Maw, so we were, we couldn't do anything else, So, which I really don't like. But I guess we'll have to end it there, because I mean, we're pretty much dead. We literally have no cores. I mean, look at this. Resistance all over the place, which makes sense down here in the south. But uh, up here in the north, no cores. So, hey, you know what? I will come back to this mod sometime in the future and hopefully do it even better. And play it in the campaign and whatnot, because uh, I feel a little gypped, I'm not going to lie. I feel a little gypped and I wish uh, we could have done more. But, hey, if you enjoyed the campaign as much as I did during the, uh, while it was fun, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.